Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your girl, Tina. Getting her day started as usual. I'm in my bathroom getting ready. Normally I'm getting ready for work, but this morning I have some training uh, that I need to do. But before I chime in and really get started in this video, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do so. So you'll know the next time that I'm on and make sure you hit that notification bell. So, uh, as uh, some of you may know, if you've been rocking with me, uh, I have uh, shared my journey as to how I ended up here uh, in Oklahoma City with my six children uh, and, um, you know, what I had to go through and what I endured uh, within that journey. And so, uh, a few, uh, individuals have reached out to me to ask, uh, you know, whatever happened, uh, to, uh, my, uh, ex-husband, uh, did he ever apologize and so on and so forth. Well, uh, the answer to the question as to whether or not he apologized, uh, yes, he did. Uh, he did apologize, uh, to me. Uh, and uh, admitted that he had uh, no rhyme or reason as to why he did what he did. Uh, now, I'm not going to say that at the time he made that apology that I accepted it. I'm not going to say that because that probably would be a lie. Uh, but because, uh, of course, you know, he was uh, trying to get me back at that point. Uh, but... Uh, I will say as time went on, you wonder if you ever or have you forgiven an individual? Well, it wasn't until uh, October of uh, 2008, I had a very good friend who um, daughter's dad had passed away. And so I do, uh, you know, I do weddings and I do obituaries and uh, uh, invitations, different things like that. So we were up at 2 a.m. in the morning doing obituaries uh, for her children's father. And I don't think he had really um, done a lot for the children. I could be mistaken by that, but. I don't think he had, but my statement to her was, you better than me because I wouldn't pay a dime to help bury my children's father's father. And that was in October of 2008. Well, June of 2009 rolled around and I got a, a call that my oldest six children's father had been tragically killed on his job. So that's what happened to him. Uh, in the end, he was tragically killed on his job. Uh, he was crushed to death. And that was one of the most painful um, things that I had to witness that my children had to endure to have to bury a parent at such a young age. Well, when it occurred, uh, my children, they went to their room and they did not come out for two days because up until that point, you know, I was angry with their father and I'm sure they were angry with their father. However, the one thing that I always demanded that they do is show him a level of respect. I did not allow under any circumstances for my children to be disrespectful to their father, regardless to what had happened between him and me. It had, it had to do with them, but it didn't have to do with them. 
And so I did not allow them to be disrespectful, to say anything negative about him in my presence. Because in my opinion, and this is just me, in my opinion, it was a reflection on me, of me, and how I had raised them. You know, I, I don't care what anybody else do or, you know, how they operate. But for me, it was a reflection. It was a direct reflection on me because I was the one raising them. And if they were being disrespectful to an adult, let alone their father, I felt like that would be a reflection of, you know, how I raised them. So I didn't tolerate it. Even to the point where one time I was in my, one of my children's phone looking for a number and I was scrolling through and I saw Junior listed in the phone. And at the time he was living in Milwaukee and I knew that it was a Wisconsin area code. And so I asked my child, who is this? Oh, that's Junior. Long as you live, you take that out of your phone. He is your father, your daddy, your dad, whatever you want to list him as. That's what he is to you. And as long as you live, I don't want to ever hear or see you be disrespectful to your father because if he didn't do anything else for you he gave you life he helped to give you life so we not going to start this trend of where you're being disrespectful to him and so that's basically how i raised them not to be disrespectful so when their father was tragically killed they loved their dad that was something that I didn't ever want to try to take away from them by, you know, putting negative thoughts into their mind or bitter thoughts of how I was feeling. You know, yeah, they had reasons to, you know, not like their dad or whatever the case may be, but I didn't want it to be coming from me. And so when he was tragically killed on his job, they wanted to bury their father in love. And I'm so proud of them for that. They didn't have any ill will or they didn't care or say they didn't care about what would happen to him. And the way they were treated after he passed, I wasn't going to stand for it. You know, I hope that if an individual lose a parent, that you never, ever have to go through other people who are not the immediate family trying to step in and take over. Because that's what was happening with my children. So that meant, because the oldest two were 19 and 18. The legal next of kin, they all were the legal next of kin, but they were of age. However, they didn't know anything about burying anybody. Hell, I didn't know anything about burying anybody. So when I made that statement, I wouldn't pay a dime to help bury my children's father, I had forgot I had even made that statement. That statement was made in October 2008. When June of 2009 rolled around, I had forgot all about it. Because now my instinct as a mother kicked in and saw that my children were hurting. And so that meant I had to step up. My husband and me stepped up to make sure 
they got their wishes as far as their father was concerned. They are still hurt by that. They haven't let it hinder them, but they are still hurt by it. So what I learned, two things I learned. Number one, yes, I had forgiven him. Two, as my good friend told me, don't ever say what you won't do when your children are involved. Because all that had went out the window. And that 38109 zip code came out. So that's what happened. Um, unfortunately, I think, like I said, the oldest was 19 and Elijah was 13. And so uh, they've had to, you know, deal with burying a parent. And he's buried back home in Memphis, Tennessee. And they go every year. Not that they have to, but they go every year to make sure flowers are put on his grave. His father would also pass away two years after he did. And so when they go back home to put flowers on his grave, they also put them on their grandfather's grave. So that's what happened. Uh, yes, I did forgive him. That's what the Lord showed me. And then two, don't ever say what you won't do when your babies are involved. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on with my day. As you can see, I have my outfit of the day. I am wearing gray and burgundy. Uh, I'm going to dress warm because the classroom is a little cold. I have to get some training because I uh, teach uh, classes for child care providers. So I have to, it's one of those train the trainer classes. So I too have to get uh, trained. So as usual, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do so. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you will know the next time I'm on. And make sure to like this video. And as always, if you're not already doing so, always take the long way home. Bye.